Hello and welcome to our academy. We have already discussed the risk mitigation measures in the course of a risk assessment according to the three-step method in one of our last videos. Today we will deal with the requirements for fixed and movable guards. Before look at device selection I have to briefly clarify a few terms. A fixed separating safety device is understood to mean a cover for parts of a machine which can be opened or removed only by means of a tool. Such as cover may be over transmission parts or gearing for example. On the other hand, a movable separating safety device can be opened without a tool. These could include doors and protective fences or flaps or openings for material supply. Then there are automatic and self-adjustable separating safety devices such as are found, for example, on handheld circular saws. Then we also have the interlocking safety devices. This will typically comprise combinations of several types of safety devices. As you can see, there are various different possibilities. Now, the selection of one or the other type of safety device, fixed or movable separating or combination is made according to the risk identified during the risk assessment. We have already explained how to do this in our video selection of protective devices. There are currently two standards that deal with this type of protection equipment. ISO 14120 which defines mainly the technical requirements for such protective devices and the ISO 13857, which deals more with the use of separate protective devices. If you would like to design and build your own safety devices, you should take into account the requirements for material selection, types of fastening and durability and focus more closely on the first standard. Let us now take a look at the criteria for proper installation. That would be the case with ISO 13857. This standard provides support for and guidance on the necessary safety distances to prevent the reaching of danger points with the upper and lower limbs, including fingers, hands, arms, feet and legs. How great the distance has to be depends, of course, on the protective construction that lies between me and the danger point. However, we reach danger points in different ways, such as by reaching, passing, sweeping or even through a separating guard. All these cases are described in detail with numerous drawings and tables. The numerous drawings help us to interpret and learn from the various possibilities described in the standard. How the relevant safety distances are determined are shown by various tables, the applications of which is then described in appendices to the standard. One thing becomes clear. The distance to the danger point and thus the accessibility are not only dependent on the risk level but also on the person who are to be protected. For example, people of different ages also have different physical dimensions, which is also reflected in corresponding tables. As we explained in the last video, it may be necessary to combine movable separating protective devices with a position monitoring device that ensures that the dangerous movement no longer exists when the protective device is open. I will give more advice in one of the next videos to make sure that you can do this and what options are available to you. Thank you for watching and bye for now.